What's up guys, it's Eventon here. I'm gonna spare you all this time around. I will be much quicker with this video since we already covered a lot of the stuff in the previous video about the event. Uh, today we will be covering the level one combat events that we will be doing uh, via filament. I believe that is the only way you can do it for the most part is via these filaments. So um, first thing I do wanna cover is just the fit very, very quickly. We'll probably go more in depth as we're running the site because honestly the site for level one is extremely easy. We are going to be using the Caracol. The main reason for this is that missiles just simply don't miss. As long as the target is within range, you shoot it. Uh, they will chase the target perfectly fine. Um, there's some small instances where they can't outrun the missile, but that's pretty rare. But for the most part, this is infinitely easier for newer players than using some of the more projectile-based um, weapons that are involve guns and things like that. So. Um, here's the fit it, it, in all of its glory. I'm going to put the link down in the description below on you could just kind of copy and paste the fit. So you copy the fit, you go down here to import, you go import from clipboard, um, and then it's, it should pull up the fit um, as is. And so you can see here on the top left, it's going to show incomplete skills. It's going to show a cavalry cruiser and all these other skills you don't have. That's pretty much just to sit in the ship and just use the weapons at their very, very base level. Um, there's a few other skills I did add here on the right side just to kind of increase the effectiveness overall uh, of the ship particularly the missiles because that's where our main damage output will be from um, did put a little bit of skills into like uh, drones and stuff like that just to utilize them but that's not where most of our damage is coming from um, overall uh, I will put this down in the comments below or I should say down in the description below so you will uh, copy the fit bring it in here and then you also copy the um, the clipboard uh, skills right here it says copy all skills to clipboard i'll do that as well so um, you can also import it that way as well so overall the amount of skill points this does take it might seem like a lot 300,000. that's still only a third of the 1 million skill points that you're going to get but all these skills are always going to come in handy um, because i do think light missiles and some of the support missile skills that you'll be getting as well as the shield skills um, you'll be using these for a lot of ships and part of the reason why i did pick the caracol is because um, the Gila is a very big ship in the Abyss, which is very similar content. Plus, light missiles are used for um, frigates, destroyers, cruisers, even multiple factions use missiles, uh, especially Kaldari. Uh, some Mimitar ships use missiles, and even some uh, Amarian ships use missiles as well. So it's a very flexible uh, ship, and all the skills that you'll be learning here do um, kind of uh, branch out to other ships and uh, play styles as well. So. There it is as well. So we'll go ahead and inject that. Like I said, this is a brand new character. This is the same character I used yesterday. I have literally put no skill points into it other than like level one frigates for some of the other factions, but that's about it. So we'll go ahead and add this. And I do want to do a quick compare and contrast, like kind of like a before and after. So you can see our missiles go out to 20 kilometers and do 106 DPS. Um, and our shield right now are at uh, 10,800. So after we increase these skills, you should see a pretty significant bump um, to all of this. So minimize this. <laughs> yeah, so our, our damage went from 106 to 165. Our HP went up a whole 500%, uh, not 500%, but 500 EHP, which doesn't seem like a lot because we are more of an active rep ship rather than a passive rep ship. And our kilometers, instead of being 20, it is now 42. And that is mainly due to some of the support skills for missiles, but also as you level up the Caracol um, skill, so Caldari uh, Cruiser, each level, you're getting more range as well as a uh, rate of fire for these uh, weapons as well. So now that we have the skills, now we can actually sit in the ship. I already have it set up. It's called L1 or Level 1 Sight Runner. I know it's very... Um, unimpressive <laughs> the description of the ship but I wanted to keep it simple for you guys so you knew exactly what you're um, getting yourself into so as we're undocking here I'll go ahead and fly over and I'll also cover the filaments as well that are involved so go ahead and do my safe spot this drone menu is really wacky here I'm not sure why it's pushed out that far and so initially when you start, when you have the guns all spread out like this, you can click this little group all weapons, right click this, you can add ammo. So this way uh, you're launching, uh, instead of clicking each gun individually, you press one button and it's gonna shoot all the, all the uh, missiles at the same time. And also try and set up your hotkeys if you can. There are lots of videos and tutorials on how to set up your hotkeys. Personally, I like using uh, QWER um, just cause I've been playing first person shooters and I like using my left hand. Uh, 
mostly, but some people like to use F1 or just one, two, three. It's really up to you um, at the end of the day. Down here's the little drone menu. And here are the filaments that I do not have set up. So let me be right back. All right, so now that I'm flying back, we'll go ahead and cover just the filaments very, very quickly. So the order of difficulty that these are set in is that it goes precarious, hazardous, dangerous, and then uh, perilous. So before they did not have the difficulty of these on here as well as like um, how many ships you can bring in and stuff, but now they do have that information, which is really, really nice. So the level one site, you could just run solo, honestly, as long as you have a ship with any kind of repper and you could do more than like 100 damage, you should be able to run these sites fairly easily. It's just a matter of just taking the time to actually do it and uh, uh, finish the site for the most part. So we'll go ahead and get this going. I will say the level one sites, you can easily do solo. Uh, the level two sites might require a, a, a bit of good piloting and skill um, and all that. You can fly it solo. You could probably maybe even do it with this fit, but it does get a bit hairy at times. So you might have to upgrade uh, a few skills as well as the ship um, as well. But like level four and level four, five, sorry, level three and level four sites um, do require a partner. I would highly, highly, highly suggest you bring someone else with you because you can actually run these sites duo, uh, including the level one and level two. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna approach this cloud. There's only two bad guys here, um, at least two small bad guys. Uh, we're going to turn on that. We're going to turn on all of the modules. The whole point of this fit is that it is cap stable, which means if you're anything like me, when I first started, I would literally just let modules run forever, which isn't ideal, but it is what it is. And in case you guys were curious, we'll go ahead and take a quick look at the funny looking Daleks. And CCP did an absolutely amazing job um, animating this stuff. I know they did get some help from um, the people over at Doctor Who, the BBC, uh, as to kind of like the, the textures and everything like that involved with the Daleks, but it looks absolutely amazing. Um, the, the layout and like the artistic style and everything of the um, Daleks. We'll go ahead and take a look at like the main ship as well. So right click, look. Oh yeah, that's what it's all about. And it's severely damaged because um, one thing I did notice is that all of the Dalek uh, main ships are severely damaged because I do feel like if they were in full uh, full functionality and at like full capacity and not damaged at all, we would probably get wrecked. So it's probably good that these ships are heavily damaged because we would not uh, stand a chance otherwise. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and look at myself now, if I can. Look at my ship, there we go. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, if you hold control and left click these ships on the, on the right side, you'll be able to lock them up. Just make sure that you have the right ship selected um, on here. So I like to take care of the small guys first. In this case, it's the single Daleks. It should only take three volleys, I believe. Uh, probably maybe one or two cycles of this. You will get some rewards here on the left side, which is pretty cool. Just make sure you accept those as they're going along. Or actually, it auto accepts. That's actually really, really cool. Uh, all right, and like that's pretty much it. Those those smaller guys are pretty weak. Maybe it's just because it's mostly the level uh, one sites for the most part. So what you can do is actually hold down left click and go to this little orbit button and you can kind of select how far you want to orbit out. Uh, now this guy actually has a web that goes out pretty far. It gets stronger as we get closer to the ship. So as you can see here, we are actually within 10,000 kilometers, almost 9,000. Um, of the critically damaged biomechanical saucer. I like the description on the uh, Dalek kind of like main ship here. Now if we look at the des uh, description here, a strange design of a spaceship with a distinctive saucer shape with sensor readings indicating that it is, uh, uses an unknown form of biomechanical technology. On initial inspection, the ship is clearly deteriorating, probably under the stress of local space effects, but it is possible that the automated defense system are still active and pose something of a danger, yeah. so. Again, I think because oh, we also forgot to deploy our drones, uh, that is one thing with these sites is they will absolutely shred your drone. So you do have to be pretty careful. Um, if you don't see your drones down here, it's probably just because the tab isn't open. So just make sure that's open. You get to see how much health they have. You can also see how much damage they're doing. And this might just straight up just take a while. Like this thing does have a ton of H um, HP. It, it probably will take, um, I'm trying to remember on my account, it probably took a good, probably like eight minutes straight of just shooting it. And of course we spent the first two minutes just kind of talking and like looking around, um, 
kind of the aesthetics and all that stuff uh, of the map, but occasionally it is pretty good to actually head over to um, some of these blue clouds because that does help um, reduce your, um, it does make you shoot more frequently. It also does help your reload speed and all that stuff. And as you could tell, the reload speed for rapid light missiles does take quite some time. So uh, rapid light specialize in doing um, a lot of damage in a short amount of time, but then the reload speed uh, does ramp up quite a bit. Let's actually try and fly away from him because he's kind of like angling to cut us off. And you can notice that our speed is dwindling, dwindling down as we get closer because that web actually gets stronger as we get closer. So we're moving slower and slower and slower. Um, over here on the left side, there's does seem a claim reward. Just keep an eye on that as you're running the sites. Um, I do know the main boss one does have a reward of doing X amount of damage, so just kind of pay attention to that to, to cash it in so you can get your next reward. Um, and these do put it on a tracker, as you can see here. If you just click any one of these that are undone, um, you do get rewards. You can kind of claim them as you go along. So this one is a, a firework crate, which seems pretty cool. Oh, we just missed the explosion. There it is. That's the explosion of the dog ship. Pretty nice. We shift R to recall our drones, so they're back in our bay. Go ahead and open this. You can left click uh, on the wreck and hold up to open cargo. You can also just right click and open cargo, but that seems to be an extra step. A lot of there are some people that do like the radial menu versus like not using it or doing things manually on the overview. So we actually ended up getting two blueprints as well as a peculiar uh, data and some strange matter as well. So this is how you're able to actually create more of these filaments. Um, like I've said before, initially it will be up to kind of like all the exploration experts to kind of find those and put those in the market. But once we actually get a few, now you can pretty much in the same way that you can with the abyss, just kind of go infinite. As long as there's just blueprints, you can either put them up on the market or just make them yourself and just keep running these sites as well. So um, as you can see down here, the event like flag, you can kind of claim your reward. And then now the next time you are docked up, you can kind of claim it and put some fireworks on your ship or, or whatever you want to do. Uh, at the end of the day. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the site. Uh, it's very straightforward. I'll probably cover some of the level two and the level three sites here in the near future. But in the meantime, hope you guys take care. And of course, you fly safe.